Welcome back to the podcast. Today I'm going to speak about racism and my opinions on what's recently been been going on and generally what we should be doing to try and get rid of it altogether. Firstly, I'd like to say that racism has been going on for a long time, maybe since the beginning of time when we've realised other people are different and we've used that against them. It's been certainly been going on since the last few hundred years, going back to slavery and even before that. And now in 2020, it's still here and it's still something we're talking about, even though we should have been gone a long time ago. Firstly, I'd like to say the recent events in America that's um, got the conversation going again. And I feel the fact that we're speaking about it so passionately and loudly and without any fear is a positive thing. We now in the uh, in halfway through July, it's been a bit quieter and lockdowns ease in the UK and people have been talking about it less and haven't really been seeing it on social media or, or in the news but I feel that we should still continue speaking about it until we see a huge change in everything from our schools, what they're teaching us uh, in the offices, in workplaces, in recruitment, in all sectors there is racism in some form directly or indirectly so it's not just going to a protest and getting rid of a few statues that does help and is a big achievement but it goes a lot more than that we need to completely get rid of it and ensure that this generation and the next and the next ones after that there isn't any racism at all and it's just something that they teach in history classes and to do that we need to have conversations that we haven't been having in the past because of political reasons or financial reasons or other reasons we've been shying away we haven't really said anything or because it hasn't affected us we haven't spoken but we need to speak anyway and make sure something's put in place where as soon as anything happens we sanction it uh, we educate them if, if need be put them in prison educate them whatever it takes to stamp out racism at the first time and now i'd uh, like to because i'm not from the black community i can't really speak too much about about um racism as a black person so i'm going to um speak about um racism in the south asian community as uh that's where i've uh that's where my parents are from um even now uh, I've, racism is still a big thing in the community whether it's indirectly or directly whether they mean it or not it's still around and some of the examples like i'd say is in the uh, some of the mosques that i've been to they've um when someone's of an let's say not south asian and they come into the mosque they won't really want to interact with them or shake their hands or um speak to them or much or they might be thinking oh why is that person here he's not usually here or is he in the wrong mosque etc and even though religion does tell us that nobody is superior in terms of race or ethnicity or other things um, it's, I think it's part of culture that's in the South Asian community that we think that we're better than them or that other other races and other ethnicities and other colours are uh, less good compared to us. That shouldn't be happening, but I have noticed that quite a lot. And maybe I'm not saying in all um, mosques and all places of worship in the South Asian community, but I'm saying it from what I've seen. And 
a lot of the ima uh, imams or the let's say the people who are speaking at their mosques and other places uh, they don't really or they might touch upon it when it's like in times of times like this when it's in the news then they might speak about it but they generally shy away because uh, a lot of them generally shy away because they know in the community it is happening and that culture that they, they don't really realize that they just do it without knowing and they think it's acceptable so if they if the imams speak then they might they might think people won't come back to the mosque or they might get backlash or they might be spoken to harshly so they don't really speak but i feel we need to uh, train imams in a way where they're they're able to speak on issues like racism and terrorism and other things that affect our community so they can speak and help and guide our community so even with their qualifications that they have in terms of islamic knowledge which is um important and is needed and is excellent we need to uh train our up-and-coming um scholars make sure they're academically um um academically well and then they're trained in things like speaking about racism spotting racism spotting terrorism spotting grooming spotting other things that are important now as an imam i think is um as as Im not i think is imams are need to um be all rounder now rather than just uh someone who leads the prayer and gives a sermon i think their role goes beyond that now because of the changing society so i think the imam needs to they need to speak more about racism in our society even though nobody likes um nobody likes calling out their own community they need to speak about it and if they see it they need to stop it straight away and uh, tell them what it says in our religion that we can't be like this because it's not about race another instance is um within family members and relatives and not direct family members but relatives we've seen that they um are racist not two people but if you're indirectly you're thinking should i go in here or should i go there but here's i've got this person over here that's gonna serve me or i've got other another person that's gonna serve me this one's shorter but the person serving me is of that ethnicity whereas even though this queue is longer the person serving me is of a different ethnicity which i don't mind so i'll go in the longer queue things like this happen because we're not educated and we just think that certain colors and certain ethnicities and certain um people are more let's say more preferred to us and that's still going on and i still see it out and about in our south asian communities and no one really says anything to them because they're either afraid don't know what to say or the person's quite old so they think um they don't have the they're not uh they don't have the right to say anything where well, you still should be saying some something to educate them um also when it comes to a lot of weddings that have gone to are generally uh, one person from uh, example bangladeshi to bangladeshi or what's this within the same ethnicities or they might be bangladeshi and pakistani or pakistani gujarati but um when it comes to any south asian with a non-south asian the, um eyebrows are raised and people start talking uh how did they let that person marry person from outside and of that color and um what's gonna happen are they gonna end up in divorcing because of their differences um what's gonna happen at home is there gonna be an um is issues with languages with uh, cultural differences with um is there gonna be issues just because of the fact that they're from a different ethnicity or, or their different color not, not based on that nothing else i've seen that quite a lot and it's still going on and it shouldn't be going on and the fact that the the families the two families involved are happy with 
the couple getting married then I, I don't understand why other people need to need to feel that they need to speak about it or say anything about it and the fact that other people uh, listening or challenging them or stopping them or telling them to be quiet shows that we as a community not only south asians a lot of people are they're racist or say things that aren't morally right but the people who aren't necessarily they're not saying those things or don't believe those things but they don't stop it because they're afraid we need to stop it as well that helps a lot and by not stopping it we're letting it carry on carry on and letting it uh, feel like it's okay to be like that and it's not and we need to look at ourselves and think what we as a community can do to stop it like we can look at other communities or blame other uh, blame society blame the schools education system the police officers we can blame um t uh every single thing we can blame but when it comes to our own community when it comes to these things we don't speak about it and then also i've seen that um people or more young people so 16 to 25 around that area let's say they want to get married or they found someone but that person isn't um from their ethnicity and they're okay with it and they like it and they they like that person but they're not the only thing that that's, that's stopping them from coming forward to their parents is because what my parents gonna say because they're not from that uh, our ethnicity or they're not from our they're not the same color or they're not the same caste or they're not the same um background and that's why a lot of parents wonder why children go behind their backs and are in uh, relationships or or and they don't come and tell us well a lot of it might be because the 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 reaction of their parents and and that's another thing that they don't want to talk about they'll talk parents will be, say um they're happy to talk about you can come and tell us if you're in a relationship or you want to get married or you found someone etc but they won't tell us yeah it's okay if they're not our ethnicity or our color we're not racist they won't say that if they said that then maybe a lot of things that have happened would have happened and things wouldn't have got in situations that they have got in but parents are still still um still like they they're so like it has to be from our ethnicity and our color otherwise we're not gonna let you so that that's why children don't speak also i've seen um this is slightly different but still about south asian and how we be uh, treated uh, but this is not slightly not to do with our community or other than other people treating us the way they treat us in airports i've noticed not just in the uk but even other international airports um people they feel that, that when they go through security they feel they get i've seen this myself as well and i've been um a victim of you get looks or you get um checked twice whereas someone else that's uh, going to the same their destination they'll get checked once and that will be briefly as well whereas we'll get checked twice thoroughly and then even i've noticed people who are generally as um dressed in let's say islamic attire like they that's the everyday dress that's how they dress every day when it comes to airport they'll make sure they don't wear those things and wear a normal or like casual clothes that don't represent a religion just and i've noticed even scholars and imams they they they're dressed in those things all all day every day that attire and when it comes to airport they even though it's a big sacrifice they make that sacrifice and wear normal clothes just to uh, not be uh, let's say uh so thumb or be stopped or checked more and that's something that we shouldn't feel we have to do because wearing clothes doesn't really mean that we're more likely to carry things that we shouldn't be or be a risk to airport security etc so the airport staff they need to be re-educated maybe or retrained that just because someone's wearing clo a certain type of clothes doesn't mean that you need to check them again or stop them or speak to them they're just a, a, a normal 
a passenger or someone else going through the airport so the way you would check them and speak to them you can you should be you should be speaking to someone else that's wearing a, um, a, a religious attire the same way and i've noticed that in family in scholars in non-family everyone they generally when it comes to an airport they'll wear they won't wear their everyday clothes they'll make sure anything that will signify their religion they'll get rid of it put it away just to make sure that a little bit easier and that's we've been putting it under the carpet because we can't really say anything we just want to go on and get through episode security get through the plane and get to our destination but no one has been saying anything about it and it's just been going on without anyone saying anything and also when it comes to when it comes to um racism as a as a as a as a whole uk community we speak when it comes to um um uh, other um other groups but when it comes to and the whole world comes together and they're part of it and they stand for it and they put statements out and they um put, put certain flags out and other things but when it comes to uh asian particularly south asians it's, it's pr pretty much our own community that speaks about it and supports it and creates awareness about it but the other communities don't come together for our cause but our community plus all the other communities come for other single causes um just putting it out there why does that happen why if there's another community getting facing racism the whole world comes together but if it's our community coming uh, facing racism why is it only our community that speaks about it and comes together and, and, and i'd say with the elderly generation that maybe it's in their it's been in their culture for a long time so it's gonna so they don't see it as racism or they don't see it as anything wrong so a lot of people they don't speak to them because they think they're not the right person to or they don't have the right to because they're a younger generation uh, so out of respect they don't say anything but we need to either speak to them or get someone older or they can relate to to speak to them because even though we're trying to educate the next generation the, the older elder generation still need to be uh, need to be educated because they're still part of the community they're still here while they're here they need to uh, understand and be educated about um not being racist and how everyone's equal and um nobody has the right to uh, um discriminate against anyone and and if they know that then they can stop that and they can understand and when they and if they do leave and if they do die they'll die knowing that they've learned that uh, racism isn't something that's in our uh, should be in our culture and that's okay and if you and if you start by uh, with the elderly generation then uh, a lot of um com um a lot of the elderly gen a lot of the asian community is the uh, the older generations coming that first came here so if we start with them then a, a lot of our population will be educated and won't be racist and and i've seen that the the younger generations they're not racist or not as much racist because they've been educated in schools in mosques or they've seen the news they've seen the social media so i'm not too worried about the next generation so I'd say we need to educate the the older people first and and then get to the younger generation and reinforce the message and put things in place so we're not racist anymore and make sure that for generations to come we're just talking about racism in our community as if it's just history and then even when it comes to um um job interviews and other things that we go to similar to the airport situation instead of wearing your um islamic attire which is a like you're you're wearing you're going to an interview your islamic attire is smart so it's not like you're just wearing anything you're wearing a smart attire you're going smart your your beard is smart you're you're smart you've got everything you're, you're speaking well but you decide not to you, you trim your beard or you don't keep a beard or you 
where um just a suit instead of what you normally wear because you're going to an interview and you're like you're thinking if I wear this then am I gonna get a job or are they gonna um think of me differently or are they gonna ask me to leave and we need to be, whether we get a job or not we need to start going in however we feel like going obviously in a smart manner but go wearing what you want because at the end of the day they're impl- if they want they know you're a muslim so they at the end of the day they're gonna be employing a muslim so if you're wearing your um attire what what difference does that really make because they know you're a muslim at the end of the day if you're a sikh you you don't you can't go in wearing your turban or whatever else you wear or with your traditional clothes they already know you're a sikh from your application because i'm pretty sure a lot of applications they'll say what religion are you on sikh muslim jewish etc so they already know what religion you are so you wearing your turban or your um clothes or doesn't really make it shouldn't really come on your mind because they already know and you should wear it and not worry so that's what i've noticed in our community and i think big bigger platforms need to speak about it and openly speak about it without fear and then by speaking about it we can move forward and as i've seen with the younger generation including my around my age and younger we're not racist or as not as much and I wouldn't say I'm racist at all and I've been brought up well so we're okay so we need to go carry on being like this and make sure the older generation aren't racist anymore and we can move forward and when we as a community aren't racist then we can completely say (coughs) we can completely say we're not racist at all and we're victims of racism right now we're uh, we're we're saying we're victims of racism which we are but we're racist at the same time so we're just hypocrites for lack of a better word so if we get completely get rid of racism we can say we're not racist and we're victims of racism and nothing's been done about it or very little has been done about it but we, we should still speak up about being victims of racism but we should all we need we also need to get rid of racism in our own community.